We want to build the sidebar navigation drawer with the feature of routing so that we can navigate to different pages. We will also look at how we can programmatically open our navigation drawer or also how to close our navigation drawer. If you are new here, subscribe to my channel and make sure to watch this video till the end. Let's get started with an our build method to create our navigation drawer. Therefore you go to your scaffold and here you have a property drawer and then we want to create here a new navigation drawer widget. Inside of this widget we want to create a drawer and this comes from the Flutter SDK. And now after you hot restart your application you will see here this navigation drawer and it also opens up here a blank space. And now we only need to fill this with some widgets. In your drawer widget you have this child property and here inside we want to set first of all the background color of our navigation drawer. Secondly we want to create here a list view which is normally used in a navigation drawer. And lastly we want to create here then one specific item. To create this item we create a new method build menu item and here inside I put then a text inside and I also choose here then this icon. And now we want to build this build menu item method and here inside we return a list tile. And here inside we want to specify first of all within the leading property the icon. And this is then displayed here on the left side of our item. And next to it we also want to display our text and this is what you do here with this title property where we put then our text inside. And with this we have here our first item. We also want to include here this on tab handler so later if we click here on this item then we want to navigate to a new page. You also could include here a hover color and this hover color will be displayed on Flutter web in case you hover over this element with your cursor. Right now if you click here on this item you don't get any feedback even if we have implemented the on tab handler and this is what we want to change. Therefore you need to go here all the way up. And here we want to exchange our container by a material widget. And now if you hot reload and I click here on this item you see this visual change. And this is because this inkwell which is used for this visual change needs always to have a material entry star. And therefore you need to include here this material entry star on top of your list tile. If you want to learn more about inkwells then I will link also in the description a video about it. If you like you can also add here some space to the left side and to the right side of your item. And therefore we create here this horizontal padding to the left and right side in our state. And secondly we include this padding then to our list view. And with this we have now some padding to the left side and also to the right side. Furthermore we also want to include here more items and we also want to create here a section so that we also can include here other icons in another section. Therefore you simply need to go here to your list view and here inside of the children property under your menu item you will simply put then the other items inside. And here I have every time chosen a different text and also a different icon which is then displayed on the right side as a menu item. If you like you can always add here also some spacing between your items so that you have more space in between. Next we want to include here a divider so that we have different sections within our drawer. Therefore we simply add here under our last item this divider and also give it some background color. And with this we have a divider between our items and now we can simply display here under our divider the other items. And this works similar like before so we simply add here a text and an icon and we simply add here two different menu items. Next we want to click on one item and then we want to navigate to a new page. Therefore we go to the build menu item method which displays here one of our items. And if we click on this item then we simply want to add here this on clicked handler and put it here inside. And with this we can go all the way up to our menu items and implement the on clicked handler. And if we click on this item then we want to call another method selected item. And here inside we want to put then a number inside which is unique. And now we want to create this selected item method and here we get then every time this number which is our index. So for the first item we have the index 0, for the second one we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. 
Let's start here with number zero. So if we click on number zero, then we want to navigate here to a new page. And therefore we simply create here another page, for example, the people page. And this is a new page which I have created and it is basically a stateless widget with a scaffold and it simply displays here an app bar which says people. After this, make sure that you hot restart your application. And then you can click here on the people and he will navigate then to the people page, which we have defined here. And the same thing we also can do with our other items. Therefore, we simply go back to our navigation drawer. And here we go then first of all to our items and include here for every item this on clicked handler. And here we need to make sure that we put then a different number inside. So basically every time I add here one number and I also add it then to all of these other items. And with this, each of our items is connected here to a number. And with this, we can go back to our selected item method. And here we can call then this case for each of our numbers to actually execute here another logic. Therefore, let's also react here if we click on this favorites. And this favorites has here the number one. And therefore, we simply go to our selected item. And here we add then this case for number one. Here inside we do then the same as before, we navigate to a new page and this time we navigate here to the favorites page and this is another page which I have created. Make sure to hot restart your application and now we can click here on favorites and he will also navigate then to this favorites page which we have defined here. If you then navigate here to the previous page, you will see that the navigation drawer is still open. If you want to have your navigation drawer closed, you simply go to your navigation drawer. And here before we push to a new page, we want to call this navigator.pop. And with this, we can programmatically close our navigation drawer and then we navigate to the new page. So let's try it out. I click here on this item and then he has also closed here our navigation drawer. And if I go back, then you see the navigation drawer is not there anymore. Sometimes you also want to include the navigation drawer to other pages. And this is pretty easily done. Simply go to this page where you want to edit and then go to the scaffold and here inside of the drawer property, simply add here also this navigation drawer widget, which we have created here. And now after your hot restart, you see also here the symbol. And if you click on it, we go to our navigation drawer. Furthermore, we also want to open and dismiss our drawer programmatically. Therefore, I go here to the main.dart file where we have implemented our navigation drawer. Within the scaffold body property, we include here then a button widget. And I also put here then an icon for this button inside and also the text open drawer. And lastly, if we click on this item, then we want to open our drawer. And with this, we have here this button on the right side, which I have implemented in another widget. And now if we click on this button, we want to open our drawer. And therefore you simply call here scaffold of context open drawer. And what this statement is doing, it is asking our scaffold, which is here on the top to also open the drawer again up. If I now click here on this button, you see nothing will happen. Only that we get here an error message within our console. And this error message tells us that the scaffold couldn't be found within our context. And this is because the context is here on top of the scaffold. And therefore we also need to include here a builder around our body property. And now we access here instead this context. And this context has an access here to the scaffold because the scaffold is a parent widget of our builder. If you want to learn more about it, I will link in the description a video about build context and the builder widget. And now if we click here on this open drawer button, the drawer will open up. You also can change where your navigation drawer is displayed. So instead you put here the property and drawer inside. And if we click on this one, you see that our drawer opens up from the right side. If we now try to click here on this button, the drawer will not open up anymore. And therefore, if you use here this end drawer, then you also need to call here this method open end drawer instead. And now if we click here on this button, you will also see that the drawer will open up. And with this, we have learned how we can programmatically open our drawer. On the other hand, we have also learned before within the selected item method that we can call here navigator.pop to actually dismiss or close our drawer programmatically.
Next, we want to create within our drawer this profile icon and also here the name and email address. And we also want to create here this search text field. And again, if we click here on this item, then we also navigate to a new page. To create this header, we want to create three fields. First of all, this image, then the name and also the email. And therefore, we want to go to our navigation drawer widget. And here within the build method, we define our name and email. And we also define here our image, which is then pointing to an image in the internet. Next, we want to create a method build header within our list view. And we put then all the fields inside. And lastly, if we then click on this item, then we want to navigate to a new page. And this is what we also want to implement. Therefore, we implement here this on click handler. And if we click on this item, we push to a new page. And here inside, we place then the name and the URL image inside. And on this new user page, we display then the name itself in our app bar and also the image which comes over this URL image, we also place it inside. And therefore, I have created this user page, which basically displays then here the name within our title and also within the body property, this image. And lastly, we need to implement our method build header. Therefore, we create here this build header method and this returns then first of all an inkwell. And with this, we can later click on our item to also navigate to a new page. And the second effect of the inkwell is if you then click on this item, you see here this splash and this is also what the inkwell is doing for you. And now we want to create our header here with an array widget. And therefore we first of all create here the circle avatar widget where we put then a network image inside. And with this, we already display here the profile image at the beginning of our row. Next to it, we want to create then two texts under each other and we also want to create another icon at the end of our row. Therefore, we add here first of all some spacing to the right side and then we want to include both of our texts and this is what we put then inside of a column. And here I include then first of all the name as a text and secondly the email. And with this, you see we have the name and email inside. And lastly, we also want to create here another circle avatar and inside of it, we want to put then this icon inside. And now if I hot reload, you see also that he is placing this icon here inside. However, we also get here some small layout issue. To fix this layout issue, we want to go here all the way up to our list view. And for now, we want to remove here this padding. And now if I hot reload, you see we don't have any error anymore. And this is because we have removed here the space to the left and to the right side. And with this, we have here more space to display our widgets. On the other hand, if you also want to have some space again to the left side and right side of your menu item, then you also can include this easily. Therefore, we simply go to the start of our people item and we want to wrap this simply inside of a column. And for this column, we set then this padding. And now if I hot reload, you see we have again some space to the left and to the right side. And next, if you like, you can also include here the search text field within your navigation drawer. Therefore, I simply go here to this build menu item of people. And on top of it, we want to display then here our search field. And therefore, I simply create here a new method where I display then this text field inside. And if you want to learn more about how to display a search text field or a text field, I will put some links in the description about it. And with this, we also have here this beautiful text field. And by the way, if you want to get here this whole source code of this application, then you can get it with the first link in the description. And with the second link, you can get access to my Flutter courses, where I teach you how you can become a better and more efficient developer. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter. And see you soon, bye.